This is a view of Bourne from the air. And as we zoom in, over on the left, you can see where the school is. And just to the right of the centre is where the church is. And as we click on it, we can see a picture of the outside of the church. So now we're going to zoom in. And as we zoom right in on the church, you can see that the church building is built in the shape of a cross. Here I am outside the biggest doors in the church, the doors right at the west end in the bottom of the tower. Now normally the only people who go in through these doors are brides when they arrive for their wedding. But today we're going to go in through these doors so that we can see what the whole church looks like from this end. So this is the font, and this is a basically a big stone bowl that we put water in so that we can baptise people, we can christen them. You might have been to a christening service, perhaps from someone in your family. Normally people who get christened in this church are small children or babies, but that's not always the case. Sometimes grown-ups get baptised as well. You might see on the floor here some strange looking lines. These actually make a kind of a maze called a labyrinth and the idea was that people would walk around the labyrinth and they would think about their journey of life and their journey to meet God. And you might have seen up here some strange looking ropes. These are the ropes that the bell ringers use to ring the bells. And I'm not going to touch them because that can be quite dangerous because bells are very heavy things and they need to be handled very carefully. I'm going to put the lid back on the font. And now we're going to move into the rest of the church. Mm -hmm. This part of the church is called the nave, and it's the biggest part of the church. So the nave stretches all the way from this pillar to this pillar, and all the way from here to where you can see the wooden screen over there. And it's called a nave because that comes from the Latin word for a boat, because the shape of it is a bit like an upside down boat. In the nave, there are things for people to sit on, which is quite good when we all gather together in the church, and I'm sure some of you have sat in these as well, and they're called pews. They're made of quite hard wood, and they're not always very comfortable to sit on, it has to be said. You will see there are some bits outside of the columns. So this inside the columns is the nave, and those parts outside the columns are called aisles. And they're just bits of the church to give extra space to sit in. Now I'm going to go up to the screen, the wooden screen, at the other end of the nave. The two bits of the church that we saw from the, our aerial view that go out to the sides are over there, either side of me. And the name for those is transepts. So there's a transept on the south and a transept on the north. And here, just where everything kind of crosses, there are some things to look at. This is called a lectern. And on it is the great big church Bible which is quite heavy and when someone is going to read from the Bible as part of a church service they stand here and they read and everyone can see them and hear them nicely. 
And on the other side is the pulpit. So if someone wants to preach a sermon or do a talk, it's quite useful to stand up here so that everyone, again, can see and hear nicely. This here is called the screen, and it divides the nave, where we've been up to now, <clears throat> from this part of the church, which is called the chancel. Now you'll see in the chancel, the seats face a different way. That's because these seats are designed for the choir to stand in and they can sing so the sound goes out into the rest of the church. If they were facing the same way as everybody else, then nobody would be able to hear them properly. And also it means the person who's leading the choir can see them all and they can see them. Here we have the church organ. I'm not going to try and play it because I don't really know how, but this is a great big powerful machine, it's got an electric motor and a blower and all sorts of things and it makes a really loud and musical sound that will spread through the whole church. And up here, this little bit is called the sanctuary. Part, the main part here is called the chancel and this part is the sanctuary and this is called the communion rail. So when people come up to receive Holy Communion, they kneel on these kneelers and they can rest a bit on the rail if they need to. And that's where they get given the bread and the wine at Holy Communion. And this is the communion table, sometimes called an altar. This is where the priest will stand while they are doing the service of Holy Communion. So here, the bread and the wine will be prepared and got ready to give out to the people as they come to the communion rail. You might have already noticed as we've gone around, there are some rather special windows in the church made of stained glass. This one is the east window because it's right at the very east end of the church. And it shows a picture of Jesus with Mary on this side and St. Helena on that side. And those figures were chosen because this is the church of St. Helena and St. Mary. That's not the only stained glass window in the church. There's another one there, there's another one further round, and there are even more in the nave and in the chancels. So next time you're in the church, why not spend a few minutes looking at these beautiful windows? The stained glass windows aren't the only beautiful things in the church. You might see as you look around the church, there are carvings on the pews. There are angels up in the roof. There are some very old things indeed. There's a very old chest that used to store all the parish documents. So the next time you come in church, do have a good look around and spot all the things that I might not have mentioned in this film today. <laughs>